aspiring scientists. Welcome to our REACH Science Session. I am Ms. Rowe, your instructor. Today, we will be doing a chemistry lesson on the particulate theory of matter. Are you ready, guys? Let's go! So in today's lesson, we will be defining the term matter, discussing each principle of the particulate theory of matter, and looking at various pieces of scientific evidence that supports this theory. Now before we dive into what the particulate theory of matter states, it is very important for us to have an understanding of what matter is in the first place. Now one of the most common definitions that we will find for the word matter is anything that has mass and takes up space, with mass being used in reference to the amount of substance or the number of particles. So. If you take a quick scan around your immediate environs, I'm sure you'll see lots of different objects around you. Now, all of these objects are made of particles, and all of these objects around you take up some amount of space. Therefore, with that being said, everything around you is matter. So guys, so now that we have an understanding of what matter is, we can now get into the particulate theory of matter. Now this theory has various principles, one of which states that all of matter is made up of particles. These particles can be either atoms, molecules, or ions. Now we're gonna very briefly go into what each of these things are. An atom is the smallest part of a substance that will have all of the characteristics of that substance. So for example, if we have the element carbon, then all the atoms of carbon are expected to have similar properties to the element carbon. Molecules are particles that contain at least two atoms. We have a little illustration here that shows that our particles can either be the same as in the case of nitrogen, gas, and oxygen, or the particles within the molecule can be made up of at least two different types of atoms as we see here for carbon dioxide with the carbon and the oxygen and for the water molecule which is made up of hydrogen and oxygen. Ions on the other hand are charged particles. They may be either an atom that has a positive or negative charge or they can be made up of a group of atoms that together will have that positive or negative charge. Our illustration shows a positive sodium ion and a negative chloride ion. Further along in our chemistry studies, we will have some more interaction with ions and molecules and atoms. Now let us move on to our second particulate theory. All particles within a pure substance are the same. Now this reigns true if our substance is made up of just one element, as in the case of graphite, or it is made up of molecules that contain at least two different atoms, as we see here in the case of water. So pure graphite will only contain carbon atoms and pure water will only contain 
molecules of water there won't be any other substance present so let's move on to our third particulate theory the particles in matter have kinetic energy now guys kinetic energy is the energy that is associated with motion with movement Therefore, if our particles possess kinetic energy, then they are going to constantly be moving. And if you look at our illustrations below, you're going to see that our particles are actually in motion. They are moving at different speeds, but all of our particles, whether it's the particles in solids, or the particles in a liquid, or the particles in a gas, all of our particles, as you can see, are in motion. Now the speed at which these particles move however is affected by temperature. So the addition of temperature to a solid will cause the particles to move a bit faster and the addition of heat to a liquid will cause the particles to move even faster. The reverse is also true where the removal of heat causes our particles to decrease in speed. So we're down to our last particulate theory. This one states that there are forces of attraction and repulsion existing between the different particles within a particular substance. So for instance, solids tend to have very strong forces of attraction between their particles, while gases tend to have weaker forces of attraction. So this particular theory will give us an idea of what happens in the various states of matter. But that is something that we'll be discussing in another video. So now we're going to go on to the evidence that supports the particulate theory. And these pieces of scientific evidence link mostly towards the kinetic aspect of the particulate theory. Now the first one is osmosis, which specifically speaks to the movement of water particles from where there is a high concentration or higher water potential to a region where the water potential or water concentration is significantly lower. Osmosis is often described as a special type of diffusion because it involves a selectively permeable membrane. Osmosis is generally found in living systems, but there are instances where we can mimic the osmotic process um, in a non-living system. Diffusion refers to the movement of particles, that's any particles, from a region where there's a high concentration of those particles to a region where there's a lower concentration of those particles. Eventually, we end up with an even distribution, or we're supposed to end up with an even distribution. So these particles can be liquid particles, or what we call fluid particles, and um, they can also be gas particles. Our final piece of evidence will be Brownian motion, which refers to the random haphazard movement of particles as it travels through a medium. This is often seen if we've got dust particles in the air. You can see them just moving around all over the place very, very randomly. Um, we can also see the same thing happening if we've got um, things floating in a liquid medium. This of course brings us to the end of our discussion. So to sum up, matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. In its purest form, it is made up of identical particles that are in continuous motion and the arrangement of these particles is highly dependent on the attractive forces that exist between those particles. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new today. You 
can uh, give us a comment in the comment section if you have any questions you can throw them in the comment section as well and remember guys to like share subscribe and of course comment see you next video